multiplication. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there was, there arose murmuring. When you begin to multiply and increase, that is when negativity starts happening. Be careful that when you begin to multiply, that there is no loophole where the multiplication goes off. So the, the, the disciples were able to spot where issues is coming from because they began to multiply. Some people began to have money. Monies began to come into their accounts, huge amount of money. They began to multiply, but they failed to note where the loophole is. So it is from that loophole, they left the back door open. So as they began to multiply, the multiplication went through the back door and the Bible, said, the Bible said, be careful when you begin to multiply. When all thy, that you have has multiplied. When thy heads, when thy men servants, when thy maid servants has multiplied. When thy sheep and thy goods, when thy maidens has multiplied. Say, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God who has given thee the power to get to us. Because it is in multiplication that men make mistakes. You think you know who you are? Oh, you think you are good? Oh, you gave your life to Christ yesterday and you were a fornicator, for example. For example, you were a womanizer and you gave your life and you, and you womanizing, all of a sudden, womanizing, run away. Wait, let, let money come. Let me tell you, no man is loyal until you see money. There is no loyalty in poverty. And some people will say, ah, Shema, hey, boss, for the Shema. When money comes, money, I will know if you will still be doing that. Hey, boss, hey, chairman. Some of you, once money enter your hand, we will start looking for you in church. You will have reasons not to be in church again. Some of you, you are asking God for a relationship that will end into marriage. When a serious relationship comes, pastor will be looking for you. That is why it's not all about the prayer. Tell yourself the truth. I, I, it, that nature of man has it's changed. Until that nature changes on the inside, some things might still be delayed. Some of you now say you are not engaged in anything positive yet. There is nothing taking much of your time yet. But you can, you, they, they look, you, spiritual things is like, ah, tiring. People will be coming to church praying to God, Father, I need contract, I need contract, I need contract. Immediately they get the contract, they start telling pastor that, pastor, that girl that brought me to church, that girl, she's below my class. All this while, the girl has been the same with your, with your class. And the girl brought you to the pastor and pastor prayed for you. And the money came now, all of a sudden you went to meet pastor and say, pastor, it's not as if I don't love her, but she's She's not my level again. Because you have seen somebody that her skin is like a mirror. And you can bank on that one and say, ah, this one is my level. You see, that I don't know you until I find you in your comfort zone, in your place of rest. That is when I will know you. Now some of us coming to church now, we are acting very loyal to pastor. We, are, we submit ourselves to the order of the church. We do so many things for God. The call for evangelism will come. I will know when you have money and you, you have that sweet, sweet car and that business is booming. I will know if pastors say we are going for evangelism, whether you will say you want to come for evangelism. Some of you are singing in the choir now and your voice is sounding so, so, so glorious. I will know if when that money comes and all of those things start happening, all of those sweet, sweet things start happening in your life, I will know whether... You will want to sing in the choir anymore. Hallelujah. So tell yourself the truth. If I get this money, if this my prayer point is answered, will I still serve God the way I'm serving him now? Would I still wake up in the night and pray the way I've been praying? Would I still do the things that I've been doing for God? Would I still find joy in the things I do? If you are going to be sincere with yourself and say, yes, I will. Some of you say, some more Bafuka relationship came. You just fell in love so much to the extent that the guy became your God. You can no longer comport and compose yourself. To the extent that you can be going to church now and the guy will call you, where are you? Eh, 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 where are you? At the go church, where did it happen? 
you feel called cooked beans. Eh, okay. Are they come? You, you, you can turn around immediately and go and cook beans. Why? Because in your heart, that guy is of more value than God. So sometimes God has gone ahead of us to see how we will disappoint him. Do you know that there are some of us that God loves in our poverty? Sorry to say. Because it is in your poverty that you can serve God well. So when God look at you in your poverty, God will say, oh, my son, I love you. Continue. Do you know why? Because even in your poverty, you are still not serious with God. Is it when money now comes that you'll be serious? There are some of us, even in our scattered relationship, we are not still serious. Is it when God now sends that one that we love you to the moon? Is it when you are not going to be serious? That, that, that is why I tell people that and as much as prayer is good, we need to have sense. We need to have what? That is why God created you and put in you as... That is why you are not an imbecile. That is why God doesn't speak all the time. The reason why God doesn't speak all the time is because he knows that you should, have, you should know what to do. You have sense to think. So there are some things you shouldn't give yourself to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to be highly sensitive. Let's go on. And he said, verse 2, then the twelve called multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now the disciples now said, It's not good that we be serving people food and we leave the, the things of God, preaching and praying and the ministry of the word. So let us raise people and place them in charge of serving food. Some of you now, you are in departments and you are not even serious in church. Some of you are in the choir department, you are not serious. Some of you are in the sanctuary department, you are not serious. Um, ocean department and every other department, you are not serious. But you don't know that power, naturally, people who should control power, who wield power, is not actually those that operate the five-fold ministry. The apostolic, the prophetic, pastor, teach, um, uh, um, pastor evangelist, teacher. People who, who should operates in high frequency power is actually those working in departments not the pastor so when you come out here and handle the mic to minister praise or worship when you are singing worship some people should be standing up from their wheelchair you that is ushering people when you are ushering people you should know the one that you should bring to the front and the one that you should keep at the back you should know the one that you should send out of the church because you are highly saying yes if you, are an, if you are an usher and you are spiritually inclined you can note somebody who is an agent of darkness coming to the church you just go and tell the person guy can you get up please church is church door closed for you today and if you will not get up you will bundle him and throw outside because it, it is not just pastor that should note all these things you that is an usher. Hallelujah. Now you that is an usher holding people from falling. There will say, wait, some of you, the reason why sometimes pastor wastes too much time in laying hands on people to be healed and to be, de and to be delivered is because you don't carry enough fire. Because if you carry enough fire, as pastor lay hands, as the person they fall go near you, as you touch the person, the demon will fly. Those days when our pastor will be praying for people and as they are falling but my pastor say hold hands with your neighbor and begin to pray pray this social prayer as we hold hands like this kupa kapa the person will be scattering why would you and usher hold somebody to pray and you'll be the one falling the keyboardist should be able to play keyboard and people will begin to shed tears you see, that is why the Bible said when we come together, one come with him, one come with Sam. When you put all of these dimensions together, we become one God. So that is a service can be... The pastor will just... Only what the pastor should do is to give himself to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what the disciples said. We should not be leaving the ministry of the word and go and be serving tables. There are people who should serve tables. And the people who should serve tables are people who are full of God. Full of the Holy Ghost. So when you come to church, everybody is depending on the pastor. 
You should come to church knowing fully well that when you hear the sound of the keyboard, something will happen to you. Knowing fully well that is the keyboard is, is highly, highly fireized. Coming to church knowing that the drummer, when he begins to play drum, he's playing the sounds of war. Just like what the Bible said, a warrior's battle is with confused noise. So they will say, where he will play the drum and people will begin to pray like never before. If Theophilus come and handle this mic, Theophilus carries chain, hammer, gun, bazooka, padlock. Anyone the devil wants, you go get. If the devil is the type that needs chain, as Theophilus is ministering, chain will be made available to go and bound the devil. If it is the devil that needs bazooka, as his ministering, bazooka will be. So you as the man of God, as you are coming to minister, you are just flowing effortlessly. Hallelujah. So, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. There are so many things that you pastors give him, pa- pastor give himself to. Sometimes I begin to wonder that I, 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 I would, sometimes in the house I will be telling myself, Long life and prosperity is my portion. I, I cannot die early. God, I cannot be doing everything. I cannot be thinking everything. You should, be, you should be in your house and God is ministering to you what to do. You should be, in, you should be seated as a leader and as a worker in church and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Talking to you, telling you areas that are of concern in his house. There are, there are a lot of things that God cannot communicate to your, to, the, to, to your pastor. There are a lot of things that God cannot do for you by just laying of hands. There are things that you should do that commands that blessing. There are some blessings that doesn't answer by laying of hands. There are blessings that answers to service. But so many of us, we lack that service life. We just want the blessings to come. We lack the service life. Today we are on, tomorrow we are off. Today we are on, tomorrow we are off. And the disciples said, we cannot leave this thing. We cannot start serving tables. Number three. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of wholeness. These are not people who want to serve food though. Food, not just literally food, just serve food. So, somebody that should serve ordinary food should be someone that has honest reports, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word simple our own to give ourselves to prayer which everyone every single one of us should give ourselves to because we're all priests and to the ministry of the word but when it comes to do with the church an usher should wield power Choir should wield power. Sanctuary department. They will say, when well, you will sweep the church and clean the chair. And as you are cleaning the chair, you are putting in the chair the power of the Holy Ghost and say, anybody that sits here must give his life to Christ. And as you are cleaning the chair, you are speaking in tongues. Somebody will just come and sit down and begin to shed tears and not know what is happening. I'm going to ask him, say, wow, my spirit. Something will just prick the person on the inside. Not just whatever you are doing in the house of God without the power of the Holy Ghost is useless. No matter whatever you are doing in the house of God, you should depend on the Holy Ghost. If you are not doing it, depending on the Holy Ghost, you are just wasting your time because it will not be, it will not, it will not be rewarded by God. Whether you are cleaning or sweeping or doing anything for God, 
don't think it is your strength tell the holy ghost father thank you for strengthening me to do this thing because it is by his strength you are doing it that is where the power is so that's when, that is why when people come to church and sit down they will be pricked from the choir administration even the person taking announcements you want to take an announcement and as you start reading the announcement hey, so so and so in the name of people are shouting ah! yes and as the person taking the announcement say please hold her hold her please hold her tomorrow morning shall be Someone, uh, please hold her she's getting healed she's getting healed tomorrow morning we're going to be having a service uh, yeah, please um, head, I just saw something now something just jumped out of somebody now hold her uh, 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 you can be really normal and, now, and things are happening because when it comes to do with it whatever you do carries power anything that you do that is like nonsense it carries power People will begin to get healed and jump up and down and you'll be thinking, ah, what am I doing? But it is by reason of the power of the Holy Ghost conveyed. Hallelujah. Now let me read from message translation. There is something I want us to see. From message translation. It says, During this time, as the disciples were increasing in number by leaps and bounds, Hard feelings developed among Greek-speaking believers, Hellenists, towards the Hebrew-speaking believers because their widows were being discriminated against in the daily food lines. So the twelve called a meeting of the disciples. They said, it wouldn't be right for us to abandon our responsibility for preaching and teaching the word of God. You see? There are some things I should not do as a pastor. They said, it wouldn't be right for us to abandon our responsibility for preaching and teaching the word of God to help with the care of the poor. Of the poor. So friends, choose seven men from among you. Okay. <laughs> choose seven men from among you whom everyone trusts read the other place men full of the Holy Spirit and what? people will get sense that means there are a lot of people who know get sense for church though they think they have sense but really really there is no sense people that are full of the Holy Ghost and people that has sense go back to King James and verse 5 says and the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip and Pochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Famenas and Nicholas as proselytes of Antioch how come they got everybody's name straight but Stephen's name was outstanding they got everybody's name for example they got this one they, uh, they, they choose Joy they choose Emokinovo they choose Yerovo they choose this they choose that they choose Akish a man full of the Holy Ghost I must put my name for there why are you not different from every other person in church let me tell you, you know how I know men. I don't know you because you know how to pray. God doesn't know you because you know how to pray. God doesn't know you because you know how to fast. God knows you from the place of alignment. How do you align yourself to his will? How do you align yourself to a vision? Now that one night God say know you. That is why a man can shut himself up and pray for hours and after he finished praying for hours God will say go and meet that man what you are looking for is in the hands of that man it's not with me so that man will have to lay hands on you you would have to submit under that man for that which you are looking for to be given to you I 
And the, the Bible said they chose Philip. Philip. I mean Stephen. Multiplication without divine order will bring murmuring anywhere and in anything. When you begin to multiply without divine order, there are some people, they don't take order from their pastor. Once money comes, once that guy comes, once that marriage comes, once that business comes, they become an island of themselves. They can no longer report to their pastor. They cannot take counsel from their pastor. Their pastor cannot tell them, keep quiet and sit down, and they will keep quiet and sit down. I pray, I pray, give God Almighty. Say, my mentor calls me and tell me, shut up and sit down, I will still be talking. Am I mad? My mentor will not give me counsel on a particular area that I don't even like. Maybe I don't like his counsel. And he will finish talking and I will not take what he said. Am I, am I, am I crazy? Now that one I should say, you, you are lying. When a man is growing in God, eh? and that man is not keeping his priesthood, that man is not doing anything about his spiritual life and he's just growing. Watch out for that man. He's, he's, he will soon fall. He will soon crash. He will soon, he will soon scatter the ground. Number two, multiplication not properly controlled will cause loopholes for leakage. Multiplication, you might have multiplied in the area of spirituality. You, you, might, you, you might think you have grown spiritually. You might think you know how to pray or you know how to do the spiritual things. But because the growth is not properly controlled there will not be loopholes there will be leakage go to the book of Luke chapter Luke Luke chapter 5 Luke chapter 5 from verse 4 Luke 5 4 it says now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets somebody say nets nets is how many more than one right let down your nets for a drought and Simon answered said unto him master we have toiled all nights and have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word I will let down the nets and when they had done this they, they enclose a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. Who knows why their nets break? Eh? You say? The multiplication, Abby. But there is, there is something they did not take note of. There is something they did not do. That's why when you are reading your Bible, take note of the words very well. Now let's go back. Go back to verse 4. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Let launch out into the deep and let down your what? Nets mean not one. Nets. Because what you're about to catch is many. One net cannot hold it. Let down nets. Right? Verse 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the nights and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the... How many? Jesus Christ said, let down nets. The fish plenty. And it is nets that can be able to hold the fish so that it will not break. You now went to let down one net. And one net can't be able to hold the multitude of fishes. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets, one, did what? Multiplication not properly controlled will cause loopholes for leakage. There was leakage. It began to go. Leakage. Hallelujah. Multiplication without caution would bet, would, will bet pride. Some of you laid hands on Eddie. Can Eddie fly? 
Someone else came the next day, you lay down for an unending headache fly. Even pastor safety. Pastor anointing safe. I'm not sure. See, the one where I carry my body, they burn. Just multiplication without caution would bet pride. Hebrews 12 7. He said, He whom the Father loveth, he what? Chastises. If one day I call you and I tell you I am disappointed in you, I am highly disappointed. You should go and cry. But there was somebody here when he started coming to church. He was pressing. Pressing this thing. But the person got so connected to me to the extent that I can tell the person anything. I was praying one night and the Spirit of the Lord told me, call him and tell him to tell the client that he is a fake. Let him tell the client his name. Tell the client everything about himself. And as I tell him, he no say, Pastor, why? I say, call her now and tell her. Give the, give the person your true identity. Tell the person everything. Tell the person that you are in Nigeria. As I tell him, the person not think two times. He tell me, say, Pastor, I talk to her now. Eh? Now, now, now. Do you know what that means? They go arrest you once. So for somebody to say, Pastor, I will some people go say, Pastor, I know say you don't understand what you grand. <laughs> and I know say what you tell me so eh? you don't know what you they talk. No way tomorrow I will go explain to you. Now for phone. Now you tell me, say, Pastor, na 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 na, I go to him. And guess what? When he told the person everything, the woman said, Because you came out truthful, because you are sincere to even open up to me, it means that you be a genuine person. You will still be my friend. Whatever I can still give to you, I will give it to you. Do not stop. Some of you are deceiving people, collecting money. Why does some other people, some other people, the money is coming freely, no deceiving. You think what you are asking God for is too difficult for God to do? You have not yet aligned yourself. You have not yet submitted. Some of you, there are some people that we tell when the guy come, introduce him to me. We say, Pastor, you know, say some guys, they know they like. All this pastor, pastor team. But no worry, no worry. When the guy come, we'll just be dating them. Whenever I would, I would try to talk to him. Ah, I would just say I'm disappointed. At this early stage, you know, go feel bend the guy. You don't know that it's when iron is hot that you can bend it. You are telling me that the guy you like all this shush, shush, and you want to go into the relationship. You are, you want to die. If the guy is not a shush, shush person, leave the person. You cannot, you, you cannot be happy there. Because let me tell you, love alone cannot keep him. No matter how he loves you, he not go fit stay. He not go fit. See me as a pastor. I not go fit stay. Should I repeat myself again? I say only love no fit keep me for relationship. Me. No, never. Do you know what can keep me? Or do you know what is it keeping me now? It's the love of God finish. So if you think you love the girl, well, well, I too love this girl, but this girl, she good. You will see somebody that is far good. If you think she is too fine, you will see somebody that is finer. God will not stop creating fine girls because of your wife. God will not stop creating fine guys because of the person you are in a relationship with you. They must be finer guys. Finer. So what is keeping some of us going is the love of God. It is the love of God. The Bible said, watch and pray. Let me say it in another way. Discipline yourself and pray. That's what the Bible said. That watch there is not look with your eye. It means set boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Some of you now that I guess... Hallelujah. What is the solution to that? 
First John two sixteen. He says, "Go there." First John two sixteen. We are we are soon going to pray. First John two sixteen. First John two sixteen. He says, "For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world." Anything you get from the world, however sweet it is and nice and palatable it is, know it that it is of the world, and the Father finds no pleasure in it. You are you are a spirit being, and the things of the world should make no meaning to you. Hallelujah. So there is there should be a reaction from within when the things of the world comes to you. So when worldly things is coming to you, when that guy is coming to you and the guy is talking nonsense, there should be a reaction from your spirit, but you are just maintaining yourself. Men full of the Holy Ghost and good sense. Powerful men are not supposed to be those who operate in either of the five folds, but leaders and workers in church. And the requirement is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And with good sense good sense hallelujah Stephen is one of the example you see Stephen the guy did so much Stephen did so much to the essence that they wanted to kill Stephen and Stephen lifted up his head and saw Jesus Christ and the father and he said I, I see him and they, and they stoned him to death so annoying so full of God this is the last verse the last scripture Joel 2.7 Joel 2 7. They shall run like mighty men. These are the people. Not, not just people who are who understand spirituality. People who understand who they are in Christ. He said, They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall match everyone on his ways. And they shall not do what? they shall not break their rank. So many of us, we have been breaking ranks. When your pastor tells you something and you don't obey, you have broken rank. When you're not doing what you need to do as a leader, as a worker, as a member of church, you are breaking rank. And when you break rank, what happens? You are demoted. So you can run. Some of you, you can run like mighty men. You can climb the wall like men of war. You can match everyone on your way. But when you break rank, all of those things you did becomes useless. You can be praying for five hours every day. Fasting five times in a week, dry. But when you start breaking rank, all of these things you do becomes useless. Don't break rank. 